Good morning. Um, my name is Stephanie Itabru. I teach at Medina High School. I teach AP Literature and Composition, Sophomore Language Arts, and Blended Learning Rhetoric and Composition. Um, I have up here the, uh, the link to my presentation. Feel free to take it um, if you like. So I've been teaching for 20 years now, and um, five of that is through blended learning. And I've been blogging about my journey in blended learning and in teaching, so if you're interested, check me out on Blogger. You could just put in um, blend me, and it should come up. Um, feel free to email me at any time. I'd love to discuss blended learning or teaching with you. Um, and follow me on Twitter. In my 20 years of teaching, one of the things I prided myself on was my ability to make the skills that I was teaching relevant to the students, or so I thought. In other words, I'd give an assignment and I would show the students how it was relevant to them right now, in college, in their careers, and in their everyday lives. And I learned a lot while doing this, but the biggest thing that I learned is when you give an assignment to a student, whoops, excuse me, it turns a student into a big crying baby. <laughs> and that doesn't change. So this is a generalization, of course, but what this means is I thought I was giving relevance to the students, and that's not how it works. You can't create relevance for your students. They have to create it for themselves. And I found this out a couple years ago through my blended learning class through a horrible, horrible tragedy, in fact. My goodness, that needs to stop. In the year and a half between 2011 and 2013, Medina lost five students to suicide. And our most recent student was a friend of my students in my class, and they were devastated, and so was I. The day after the funeral, my students had a class meeting, and we had been on the verge of doing some sort of big research project that involved mixed media and paper writing and videos, and we weren't quite sure where we were going with it. And my students said, we need to do something more. We need to make a difference in our community. And so they started the Stomp Out Suicide Project. Here you can see my students with a banner that they created. It says, you are not alone. And we had everyone in the community sign it as a form of support. The Stomp Out Suicide Project started out as being a video that they wanted to make to show suicide awareness and prevention and they wanted to submit it to a district-wide competition. But they soon realized that just making a video isn't as easy as it seems to be. Um, it takes a lot of editing, it takes a lot of pre-writing and rehearsal. So some of the things that they did were they learned that they had to make storyboards. They had to learn what storyboards were. They had to practice them and write them and rewrite them. They had to learn that they had to write formal papers, persuasive essays that went along with the video for the competition. They learned that they had to use their listening and speaking skills because they chose to interview people in the community who had families um, who were victims of suicide. They interviewed first responders in Medina. Um, they learned that they had to ask permission from people in authority, so they had to write formal letters and emails, and they had to visit those people and <laughs> interview them. They decided that they were going to do it all themselves, of course, and they um, planned a video where the whole community would take part rather than just the class. So they canvassed the neighborhood, they went to local businesses and asked for money and donations for food. They came up with an opening and closing <laughs> ceremony that went around the rehearsal and the actual taping so that the people who were there would feel a, a part of what they were doing and realize how important it was. They contacted journalists in the community and families and um, uh, ambulance workers, um, doctors, firemen, um, policemen, and invited them all to come out. They also brought the banner around to different schools and asked students to sign them, um, to sign it in their support. They also sold wristbands that had suicide awareness. They sold them for a dollar each, and they raised over $700 that they donated to the battered women's <laughs> shelter of Medina. Now, in the middle of all this, what was my role? My role was to be their guide rather than the expert in the room, because I couldn't possibly arrange all of this myself. 
nor would I want to. It was their project. So what I did was I watched them, and then when they decided that they needed a way to organize their collaboration, I showed them how to work a wiki through our learning management system, which is Blackboard. When they said that they needed to write um, a research paper, I showed them how to collaborate using Google Docs. When they said that they needed to reach a greater audience than their peeps they were texting, um, I showed them how to use Twitter, and they created a hashtag for the program called Medina Strong, and they used it on Instagram also. Um, so along the way, um, it took a long time, and it was crazy. And as Dr. Finelli said, there's, it's, it's almost chaotic, the amount of information that's out there and the ways that students can achieve things. And there were times where I thought that I was going to pull my hair out. But it all came together. This is a picture from uh, the Medina Post of our rehearsal day. Um, the students led a whole crowd of people. They provided pizza and pop um, to the crowd. They had activities for little children who um, needed something to do while we were rehearsing. They interviewed families and taped them and wrote transcripts of them during that time. They had students hold up signs and sign our banner. And then we did the actual taping. And what I'd like to show you now is um, the Stomp Out Suicide video that my students did. It's something that you can disguise And I know you feel lost and alone But you'll never have to face this on your own Cause I'll build you up when you're weak I'll be the light when you can't see We'll stand together, cause I believe in you, you make it through. I see the pain in your eyes, it's something that you can't disguise, and I know you feel lost and alone. But you'll never have to face this on your own Cause I'll build you up when you're weak I'll be the light when you can't see We'll stand together cause I believe in you You'll make it through Cause you are strong, you are brave, you are more than enough. You are strong, you are brave, even when the going gets up. But if you're losing the fight, I'll come to your side. Okay. I still get choked up when I see that. Gives me chills. You would think that the video would be a culmination of their project, but it really wasn't. Um, it was a great day, but then, of course, they had other things they had to do. They had to present the video, so they, went, they presented at two board meetings. They also went to the public library for evening meetings where they had people sign the banner. They sold the wristbands, and they presented their program. We won second place in the competition. We should have gotten first, but okay. Um, <laughs> And they also participated in the Medina Walk Out of the Darkness, which was a community suicide awareness walk which raised over $9,000. Um, and of course, there were newspaper articles and, and interviews. Um, this, this project had more relevance to these students, as they told me later, than anything else that they had done. What they got out of it was that they were able to make a difference and feel like they, were, they had power in their community. Students who had been so shy that they didn't want to speak to anybody else in their own classroom voluntarily went to business owners and asked for money for this project or voluntarily offered to interview administrators or families of victims because they knew that was something they needed to work on and they felt the importance of it. Um, 
I'll talk a little bit more about reflection at the end. I want to talk about what I'm doing currently this year, because you can't do something like this every year. And again, you can't force relevance on your students. So this year, my blended rhetoric and composition class is doing something a little different. I started with a problem for them, one that you might recognize. The problem is illiteracy. And um, I talked to my students about this, and I showed them these statistics. 50% of adults cannot read a book written at an eighth grade level. 45 million are functionally illiterate, and they read below a fifth grade level. 44% of American adults don't even read a book in one year. And more disturbingly, six out of 10 households do not buy a single book in a year. And when you think about how many of those households have children, young children in them, it's more than disturbing. And it's easy for children in, in high school who can read, presumably, to say, well, this isn't the case with us. And I told them, this is in your community. This happens too. And what can we do about this? And so my students have come up with what we call the Garfield Book Project. And it's named after an elementary school in our district. What the students decided to do is to help um, struggling readers by creating audiobooks. But they didn't want to just record the books, they wanted to make them interactive. So the students who listen to these books will also have activities that go along with it that involve speaking, reading, listening, writing, but also getting up and moving around and acting like dinosaurs or building little hats and wearing them or things like that. Because they said part of reading should be fun too. So the stages that we're in right now are the students are prepping the chapters and they've come up with these activity tables where they have timestamps on them in the reading and where they ask students to do certain things um, in the chapters like get up and walk around like the dinosaur in the chapter or um, draw a picture of what you think the dog looked like. Um, as well as questions that go along with the standards that deal with conflict and resolution and climax and all of those things. Today, I hope, they're supposed to be recording their um, readings. And one of, the thing, one of the tools that I didn't have during the Stomp Out Suicide program, but I do have now, I want to make a plug for PBS Learning Media. Um, I use this site every day, and I highly encourage you to go there and register. It's free. And on here, I was able to stream lots of videos of celebrities reading out loud to children. Here you can see Jimmy Carter. But there were, um, there were athletes, the Atlanta Hawks, the Atlanta Falcons. I have a whole bunch of them up there. And so my students and I were able to look at those and critique them and say, well, what can you do that is like this or better than this? Um, as I said, hopefully, while I'm here with you, they are recording their chapters. And our next step is we're going to critique those and perfect them. Um, the culmination of the project is going to be a series of book trailers with the elementary students that they're designed for. Um, our students are going to create these trailers using YouTube tools, which kids use every day. They'll be using Sweet It, Draw My Life, and One Minute, One Take. And if I could just put a plug in, if you want to know more about these um, YouTube tools, see Shannon Conley Curgeon's presentation after lunch today, because that's what she'll be talking about. So after every project, and of course we're not finished with this one, but this is how I ended the Stomp Out Suicide Project, and this is how I'm ending this year with the Audiobooks Project. I have my students reflect on what they learned. They need to take a look at the standards and um, see where they mastered them. They need to think about collaboration. I ask them to write about it. I ask them to write about what they know now about digital technology and the tools that they used, and about writing and speaking, listening, um, and most importantly, I ask them what they learned about themselves. And this sort of goes back to the idea of relevance. The students create their own relevance, and this is where I measure that. If, if we've done our job correctly, they realize they've hit all of those standards that we're so worried about hitting and that we test all the time. And they realize it, and they realize how useful it was. I have stu these students from the Stomp Out Suicide Program still write to me today and say, hey, I'm texting you right now from my English Lit class, and I'm showing everyone how to do this and this and this. And it was because of the Stomp Out Suicide Project, and thank you. So um, 
One thing I'd like, well, there are two things that I hope that you take from this. One, we said, is students need to create their own relevance. We can't force it on them. And the other one is that learning is messy. And Dr. Finelli was, was just talking about this. It's so overwhelming. There are days that I walk into my classroom and I see 15 different projects going on and I just think, oh my gosh, just get me through these 45 minutes and let's see what's gonna happen. And there were so many days during the Stomp Out Suicide Project that my students would say to me, hey, you know what? Take a deep breath, it's all gonna work out. And don't throw up in the room, please. Um, and it did work out. When we examined what the students were supposed to learn later, they hit every single mark, every single time. And the idea is that I didn't have to be in control for that to happen. I didn't have to be the expert in the room. I was able to sit back and learn with them and guide them in their journey. Learning is messy, and the learning happens outside your comfort zone. And if you're willing to take a step outside that comfort zone, the rewards are so much greater than you could have ever anticipated. And one last thing. Yes, you should be outside your comfort zone, but use the resources that you can, the free resources that are out there. And once again, PBS Learning Media is a great place to start. Thank you very much.